Uh, next, I would like to invite, uh, I believe it is Amy Scobie, also of City Park <coughs> Bathhouse. Welcome. And you also have five minutes. Thank you. I'd like to congratulate all of the new councilmen and women. Thank you so much. I won't uh, go into uh, what Dr. Rivera um, said. I do agree with him, and I think that um, he does have valid points. Um, I am a new, fairly new, uh, Pueblo resident. I grew up in Lakewood, Colorado, and lived for many years in Denver, Colorado. Um, I have restored many old houses, Victorian, Craftsman. Um, I guess you could say I've flipped some. So I've taken homes in very, very bad condition, basically made them beautiful, and have sold them. So now I've, I've been working in Pueblo. My family and I, we bought eight houses. One of them is a mid-century modern, 1950s brick. It's actually in excellent condition. And looking at the bathhouse built in 1958, it also seems very solid, structurally sound, just a simple one-story structure. And I also um, believe it may have a new roof. So I do agree that the current bathhouse is absolutely filthy. And when you walk in, you think, wow, um, we really need a new bathhouse. And I'm questioning, do we really need to demolish the structure that um, seems very structurally sound, um, already has handicapped access, already has 36 inch wide doors uh, to make sure that we can accommodate those in wheelchairs. Um, I do realize that there may be asbestos um, and that we want to take the asbestos into serious consideration, but to demo and then rebuild for approximately three-fourths of a million dollars. I do also question, gosh, is that really how much it should cost? Um, are we really going to be benefiting the taxpayers? And, you know, is something we can really afford? Um, I mean, I'm just saying if it were me, if uh, I was going to flip this bathhouse and restore it, um, I think it could easily be done for a lot, lot less than um, even half a million. Um, I would, number one, not spend $12,000 on exterior painting. And I know we want to use graffiti paint, but what about just using white paint on the exterior so that if we do experience graffiti, white over white is fairly simple. Um, quite honestly, um, I would only spend about 2000 for extra painting. And then approximately 90000 plumbing, that also does seem extremely high. Uh, I don't know if that includes all sewers, all water lines, um, toilets, uh, sinks. I was thinking less than half of 90000 maybe even less than that, unless we're using copper. So if we're going to be Another question is, would it be new copper plumbing? And if put in new copper plumbing that is also exposed on the outside, would it be stolen? So anyway, I would just ask uh, council members to please consider another bid, and please consider um, voting again. Um, if we could receive a vote, um, I just it just seems to me unbelievable that it costs this much. Um, uh, Denver home that I restored was approximately a thousand square feet um, and I spent forty thousand dollars to restore the entire house that includes new roof, uh, new furnace, new water heater, new plumbing, new electrical and we gutted the uh, kitchen. So forty thousand dollars later I basically had you know a new modern remodeled home and it sold so I just want council members to really look at the numbers and think, gosh, you know, is this the best way to spend our money? 
um, because we want the pool to be open. We want the children to enjoy it. And I mean, heck, I would, I would really just start with some bleach, um, and um, you know, just get the kids in there, get some sweet mm -hmm. lessons. Excuse me, that concludes your five minutes. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you for your testimony, and welcome to Pueblo. Thank you. And please come back. All right, next I would like to invite, uh, is it Clyde Kramer? Kramer? Is it Kramer or Kramer? Okay, welcome. Thank you. And you also have five minutes, Clyde. Pardon? You also have five minutes. Okay. And I will politely cut you up if you go over five no minutes. No problem. I'll invest in that. My name is Clyde Kramer. I'm president of American Law of Homes. Uh, I reside in Colorado. I've uh, been in the law of home manufacturing business and construction for nearly 43 years. My concern is the recent bid for the bathhouse at City Park next to the swimming pool. <coughs> the low bid for new construction was $670,299, $277 plus a square foot. This seems excessive for a concrete block building with few amenities, a few showers and toilets. If one looks at the line items, we see nearly 12,000 for painting. If the anti-graffiti paint and the regular paint that goes under it are deducted at, say, $3,000, it leaves some 9000 for labor. At $35 an hour to spray paint the building, that comes at 257 hours, or nearly six and a half weeks at 40 hours per week. <laughs> Rough carpentry at $12,501, metal roofing nearly $38,000, Toilet petitions, which in the present one is concrete block, $7,900. You get the point. Uh, this may be the whole bid, but should it should be given a line by line evaluation as to see if it's if it's uh, excessive for the city of Pueblo. <coughs> a house on the market in Pueblo West is 4,359 square feet plus a three car garage. It has three-way gas fireplace, four bedrooms, four baths, located on 1.1 acres of land, has granite countertops, double oven, etc. Price is $580,000. If you deduct $40,000 for the garage, at least $540,000, or $124 per square foot, which includes the price of the land. The bathhouse is $277 per square foot. Can the city have a problem for this luxury? Is this expenditure defensible when the police cars are in bad shape and there is a lack of police officers. With gangs and drugs running rampant in Pueblo, should, should this expenditure on the police department take priority? The schools in District 60 are not being the great, but the state of Colorado threatening to take over the schools. The dropout rate is high, test scores are low. Should we not consider more funding for the schools in Pueblo? After driving on the city streets this weekend, maybe a few more sanding trucks would be in order. Then there's the infrastructure, such as sewers, water lines, and streets. Even if some of the money for the bathhouse comes from grants and Colorado lottery money for parks and recs, maybe some should go to clean up the weeds and the trees at the Nature Center, which is in not very good shape for where people congregate. After looking at the present bathhouse this week, I found out that the roof doesn't leak, the electric is not flawed, the toilets and plumbing are not deficient. In short, it seems that too much money is being allocated for a bathhouse that is still usable in a city with a large number of social and infrastructure concerns. Every agency in the city says that there is not enough money. With this much money spent on a building that is still usable, I can see why. And I feel that expenditures like this are just the tip of the iceberg. And it's not just on local issues, but the state, federal government, etc. And I think that thing need to be looked at very carefully uh, to give the taxpayer a uh, fair shake for their tax money. Thank you very much. Clyde, thank you very much for your testimony. All right, next, uh, Brett Turner. Brett, welcome. And you also have five minutes. And the subject is bathhouse. First of all, I'd like to congratulate everybody. I've been on both sides of this from the outside and had family on that side, so very much. Uh, my con 
concern is uh, I have received numerous phone calls in reference to project number D15-053, which is the city park bathhouse. So with several calls, I decided on Monday, you know, uh, why don't we go take a drive by and take a look at it. So I brought, showed up over there on Monday, surprisingly found the building open. So I decided to go ahead and take a walk through. I grew up over there. I used to swim at that swim, pull and swim for the dolphins. And spent a little over an hour or so there, and I did a physical assessment to the building. And I was really surprised on the structure of the building. The building seems to be very, very sound. I have over 35 years in the construction industry, and I've done numerous renovations, historical preservation, and projects that were far exceeding the technical of this building. And then I decided, after looking at it and seeing the concessions and everything, I started looking at it from a different aspect. How could we use the building? Uh, it's approximately 2,400 square feet. Uh, looking at it and thinking, wow, we probably got to bring some ADA modifications that could be done. We probably want to take the infrastructure in the building, the sewer and the water, open it up and change the sewer lines and build that up. That could be done. We can bust out the interior concrete because the building foundation and structure rests on its own merit. It's all masonry. It's solid. There's no infractions. There's no soil movements and nothing that was going on. And then, then I heard that the building was going to cost approximately $700,000 for a seasonal use building that I was quite surprised. So then I took and did my math backwards and said, well, okay, we could save this building. We could modify this building to look like even like the buildings that are being drawn on the other bathhouses that they renovated, which are beautiful, I might add. This building is really actually a great sound building. It is a little poor on maintenance, I will say. You know, it doesn't show itself well as a city facility for our kids, but it functionally very well. I mean, if we go and do this building and build a new structure over there, then the existing building we got to tear down, which is, as far as I'm concerned, very solid. We could raise the roof and redo it. Then we have to change all the infrastructure that are that's going to the new building and demolish and cap off the old, pour the concrete, the fence, and everything else. The other really big thing that faced up to me as I was looking at it, is all the school districts in Pueblo has put, taken and spent millions of dollars to do these children pick up and drop off zones. Well, City Park already complements it with the way the road enters it and exits. So there's a safety area. That was a big plus to me. And then looking at where the new facility was going to go, I looked at the parking lot and I seen all the other venues that use that parking lot. I mean, we got Frisbee golf, we've got baseball, we've got horseshoes, and we've got the swimming pool. So there's a lot of other venues that we'll be taking away from on that additional parking. And then the congestion of back to dropping off the kids. I happen to have kids and I've got a grandson now. So that seems to be pretty important to me and I know it's probably important to everyone else. So all I'm asking is that if we can somewhere look at, and I wasn't here for the beginning of the work session, I apologize. But if, if we could table this uh, and give some time to assess the buildings, I will personally give back to my community and I would be more than happy and willing to volunteer my time to look at the other buildings and come up with some valuations and look at it. I know we've already done some A&E fees that have been done in the new building. I know some of that's going to have to be pushed. But I believe that the savings in the building on City Park alone will merit mm -hmm. that we could probably go back and complete Mineral Palace, which I think is one of the four buildings that this whole grant was put together with the uh, lottery funds and the GoPro money was listed on all four of those buildings. I think we can achieve both of those facilities to bring, bring up dates to them and, and create good facilities that we need for a semi-use. So that's, you know, if, if you guys would assess that and if you would like, I would be willing to volunteer my time. So as that ends it, uh, I hope you guys really look at that and uh, we get to spend our money the way we need to. I think it's the building is totally savable, big time. So, and it can be easily adjusted and reworked. And by the way, welcome to New City Council. And the old guys, and thank you very much. Yes. Greg, Greg, thank you very much. And uh, I didn't know you were old enough to be a grandparent. Yeah, yes. June. Congratulations. I'm excited about that. I'm done. I'm pretty good excited. To, good to see you. All right. Uh, next we have, uh, I'd like to invite Jerry Grady. And Jerry's going to talk about ethics.